Welcome to Life is Brutal. I'm Anthony. Today, I want to talk about the Hindenburg disaster and how a bottle of Lovenbrau sold for $16,000. In 1937, the Hindenburg Zeppelin attempted to land at a naval base in New Jersey, marking the conclusion to its first transatlantic voyage, ushering in a new era of aviation and luxury travel. Unfortunately, in the final moments of the trip, the Hindenburg's journey would abruptly change from a groundbreaking aviation marvel to the most catastrophic disaster in aviation history. Up till that point. As the Zeppelin came crashing and burning down to earth, emergency service and personnel rushed to the scene in hopes of being able to mitigate the disaster, possibly save some lives. And once all the flames were quelled, they started digging through the wreckage, hoping to find either survivors or the remains of the passengers and crew. In an honestly shocking fact, 62 people survived the Hindenburg crash out of the 97 people that were on board. Only 35 died. That, that's, that, that was, that's honestly surprising to me. One fire marshal, a man by the name of Chief Leroy Smith, as he was digging through the wreckage, he stumbled across a rather intact six-pack of Lovenbrau lager. Now, every single bit and piece of the crash site was to be kept as evidence. And for unknown reasons, Mr. Smith decided that he wanted to keep these uh, six bottles of Lovenbrau lager, maybe as memento, maybe as a keepsake, I don't know. But knowing that everything would be confiscated by the government to be analyzed in you know, labs somewhere very far, far away, he decided what he was going to do was dig a little hole and bury his six bottles in there and cover it up out of sight. That way, no one would find it. And then once the scene was cleared, he would come back, dig up the bottles and take them home for himself. I'm not gonna blame Mr. Smith because I know that if I was in that situation, I would uh, feel the same temptation and I can't can't say with 100% honesty that that thought would not become uh, a bit more than just intrusive and I would probably do the same thing. So once the bottles were back at the Smith residence, he decided he was going to keep one for himself as memento and he gave the other five away to his family, co-workers, and friends. And they largely remained out of sight, out of mind, out of the public thought for decades. And it wasn't until 1977 when one of his friends that he had given a bottle to had passed away. And the widow of his friend was like, I don't know what to do with this. I'm going to give it back to the Smith family. However, Mr. Smith at this point in time in the 70s, for unknown reasons, he no longer wanted to hold on to this Lovenbrow, this, this famed piece of history. Because in the 60s, he had actually given his bottle away to his niece. So once the bottle was returned to the Smith family, they decided that they were going to actually send it back to Germany where they donated it to the Lovenbrow brewery brewery itself and you can still see that bottle on display in the brewery's uh, museum part still to this day as a tourist attraction. Now the return of that bottle to the Lovenbrau Brewery, it, you know, it caught headlines in and of itself. But this story wouldn't hit a true fever pitch until around 2009 when Mr. Smith's niece, who was getting a bit older herself, decided that she was actually going to auction off her bottle. The bottle offered by Smith's niece was a rather impressive artifact. The label remained relatively well intact, the cap remained in place, and a rather impressive amount of liquid remained inside the bottle. Sure, it did look like it survived an air crash, and the beer inside was without a doubt spoiled and putrid. But, uh, for all intents and purposes, this was the absolute best condition anyone could have asked for for this particular relic. And the timing of the sale was absolutely perfect. Now, 2009 was a great time for this bottle to go into the market because this was the very beginning of that big craft beer boom. Beer had more eyes on it and more people interested in it than 
probably it had in decades. So seeing this interesting bit of like disaster and like dark tourist history, you know, uh, go on market for something that is incredibly hype and popular at that point in time, it was expected to uh, reach some pretty significant numbers. Early estimations assess that it would probably sell between five and $7,000, which is a good chunk of change. So more and more press releases started coming out about this new auction coming up and it started bumping that price up to the nine to $12,000 mark. But then the Löwenbrau authenticated the bottle that said, yes, this is one of the Hindenburg bottles. We can compare it to the one that was returned to us. Uh, it's, it's the real deal, which got a little bit more hype going on. And then an authenticated signed letter of declaration coming from Mr. Smith himself telling the tale how he acquired the bottle, how he dug a hole and buried it, how he tampered with evidence and hid it away from the crime scene and all this other stuff. Uh, that caused so much attention to be drawn to it because not only was this just a cool bit of beer history and a cool bit of aviation history and disaster history, now it had an interesting story behind it. And people love interesting stories and when you combine it with those other facets and aspects it becomes huge rapidly the auctions rose all the way up until it finally sold for sixteen thousand dollars becoming one of the most expensive if not the most expensive beer ever sold ever in fact, I don't think that price, that $16,000 price tag for a single bottle was surpassed until 2020 when a bottle from a 19th century Arctic expedition sold for $500,000. So a bit of a price spike, you know, kind of overshadows the Löwenbrau story a little bit. Still, I find the Hindenburg Löwenbrau story to be incredibly fascinating because not only does it have to do with something I'm interested in and passionate about, but it does have that incredibly weird story behind it you know like what are the chances that some bottle that would survive the crash first off would be found by somebody who wants to keep it who is also willing to jeopardize his career and his livelihood by digging it in the dirt burying it hiding it recovering it and then keeping it safe for decades it's so cool it's so interesting since that huge $16,000 auction, there have been other bottles that have come forth into the public domain where people are uh, finding them and starting to sell them off and things like that. Weirdly, it is going for significantly lower prices. We're talking 5,000 to 9,000 on average. And I think it really has to do with the fact that it just doesn't have that, you know, I'm Mr. Smith and I hid this bottle that that original $16,000 bottle did. But hopefully one day all six bottles will come to surface and I would love to see them all reunited, the six pack put back together. And of course, that belongs in a museum. So I hope they are all eventually returned to the Löwenbrau Brewery where they can be put on display for everyone to see. That would be the ideal finale to this really weird story. Thank you for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed. This was certainly a much shorter video than I normally do, but I've got a lot in the works and I am cooking up some really interesting stories. So I uh, hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. And remember, there is a story in every bottle and that life is beautiful. Cheers.